What's going on everybody and welcome to part 10 of our self-driving car, scooter, whatever with Python and such tutorial series. Um, in this video, well in the last video what we did was we built some training data. I said get about 100,000 samples. I did no such thing. Um, but, but whatever. I think I got about 80k or, or something like that. Anyway, we'll, we'll look at it in a moment. Um, so what we want to do now is check the data, balance the data, and all that kind of fun stuff. So the first thing we want to do is create, let's just create a new file and I'm going to call this um, balance underscore data dot pi. I'm going to open that bad boy up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear it and then I'm going to make sure I don't go off my screen. Great. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do first is we're going to import numpy as np. Get rid of this thing going on here. Let's import pandas pandas as a pd. Uh, we're going to go from collections import counter and then from random we're going to import the shuffle. So numpy obviously pandas should be obvious but yeah we're going to use pandas um, just to quickly wrangle the data. We're actually not going to be doing that much with pandas. It, pandas might not even be necessary for this step. It's just that a couple of steps I know I want to do. Um, I know how to do with pandas. I already have pandas on my machine. This is really a series for me just running through this kind of a task. So get pandas if you don't have it. Um, from collections import counter. This is so we can see what moves, how many of them, and so on. And then shuffle so we can shuffle our data before it's actually training data. So let's say train data equals np dot load. And we've got training data dot numpy. Now the training data I recorded in the previous video is right here. I'm actually gonna check that just to be 100% certain the code and everything was correct. So I'm gonna load that first, but then eventually we'll get to the actual training data. But first I wanna do training data vid. Now what I'm gonna say is for, and in fact, let's also import CV2. So import CV2 and yeah, that's fine. So for, um, let's do for data in tra train data. We're gonna say image equals data zero if, and then choice is uh, data first if. CV2.im show, um, we'll just call it test and the image. And then let's go ahead and just print the choice just so we can kind of see it. And then if cv 2wait key 25 and 0xff, is that right? That's no, 0xff. <laughs> I'm totally copying this. Uh, xff, there we go. Equals word q. I'm not quite sure why we have to have this kind of like quit thing, but we do. Anyway, cv2.destroy all windows. Actually, I guess this is so it destroys the window and after it's shown it or something. Anyway, whatever. Break. And then, yeah, cool. So let's just do that first. And let me just see if... Wait key. Did I... Is it wait? Anyway, there's part of the data. But yeah, let's see here. Wait. Wait, where's wait key? Oh, here we go. So it's probably camel cased. Let's try that. There we go. So as you can see, there we go. It's forward. It's, he just turned. You can see it updated. He's turn, I'm turning some more. Okay. So this looks about right. And the the, the actual shape here, this extra screen, um, that's because of the buttons here. That actually, it's not like we had all that gray screen there. Um, it's not there. <laughs> I promise. Um, but we could also just, just prove it. Um, print image.shape. We should be able to get away with that. Okay, so 60 by 80. Okay, so cool. Everything's looking good. Um, 60 by 80. Sorry, I think CV2 does flip it, but okay, we, it is 80 by 60. I was like, 60 by 80. I'm panicking. <laughs> okay, so did I just close out of balance data? Is that what I just did? I think I just did that. Um, the other thing I want us to go ahead and do now is actually what I meant to do in balanced data. So I'm content with that. I'm content with the dash vid part. I just want to make 100% certain that the code I wrote was correct. Um, and now what I want us to go ahead and do is uh, we don't need main anymore. Now I'm going to actually balance the data that was the data I built up to this point. So I'm going to get rid of this loop. Actually, I'll comment out this loop just so, just in case someone wants to go through that. 
Now we're going to say is df equals pd dot uh, data frame train data. And then let's go ahead and print df dot head just to make sure we're working with something good here. It's 500 megabytes, so it might take a second. Okay, cool. So as we can see, column zero is the image data, column one is the output data. Now what we're curious about is how balanced or unbalanced is this data? Well, like I said, it's most likely all, like such a huge percentage of just go forward, right? And that's gonna be a problem when we train. So let's go ahead and see how, how bad we are. So print counter df, oops, counter parentheses, um, df1 for the column dot apply string. We have to apply string because you can't do a counter on a column of arrays for whatever reason or lists or whatever. So let's run that real quick and then we'll see what our out or our layout is. Okay, so as you can see, we've got about 70,000 um, go straights, 6,700 uh, rights, and 6,400 lefts. Okay. Um, so if we fed this, there's a few things. First of all, we could feed this through a neural network and chances are um, it would at least register in some cases like where you wanted to turn, it would it would say with some degree of certainty, you know, turn, it just would, the, the argmax of the function would still, or the argmax of the output would still be just go straight. So you could apply an algorithm to the output of this exact, um, you know, training data. That's possible. And a lot of people kind of don't think like, like a neural network probably isn't going to be exactly what you want. There's going to be an algorithm that you oftentimes may apply on top of the output of a neural network. But for some reason, like I was saying before, people think you can just like slap a neural network on things and it's going to work. Not always. But what I'd like to do is actually balance this data so they're all the same length. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, we're going to set all of these to be at max, 60, let's say 6427 long. So um, to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to say uh, lefts equals this, rights equals this, and forwards equals this. Then we're going to shuffle the data, shuffle train data. Now with data that's temporal and linear, a lot of times people kind of bring up that, why do you shuffle your data syntax? That doesn't make any sense because if you shuffle it, you're losing, you know, the linearity of the data. Well, that's true, but... Our neural network, it depends. Like if we were using an LSTM or something like that, it would make sense to keep it linear. <laughs> but that's not what's happening here. What happens here is every frame is its unique snowflake. It doesn't, the neural network is not going to look at the previous frame as it's learning. It's not going to look at the previous frame any more than it cares what the weights of the nodes are. But as far as what action you were taking before, let's say you were turning left or right, when you're looking at the, the, the image data, it doesn't care. It doesn't care what your previous action was. So, and it might be the case in practice, you care what your previous actions were. But in the training of a convolutional neural network, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't take into account temporal data. So we are going to shuffle the training data. That way, it doesn't become biased for specific movements. Um, if you fundamentally disagree with me, feel free to not shuffle the training data. That's fine. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the data. So for data in train data, um, and in fact, we're going to just copy this because I already wrote this and uncomment it out. Uh, alt three for a bulk comment, alt four to uncomment. If you are in idle, a lot of people don't like idle though. If choice equals one zero zero, if that's the case, we're going to say lefts dot append. Um, image and choice and then I'm just going to take this copy paste paste and we're going to say elif elif else so elif it is zero one zero and then we also have a zero this. so left this would be straights or forwards and then this would be rights else we want we would like to see the output of this one so let's go ahead and say no matches so if we get a no matches something went wrong and this would probably be one of the examples <laughs> it's never going to be a queue okay so uh great so once we have all of this 
what we'd like to do now is make sure they're all the same length. How do we do that? Well, what we could do is the following. Forwards equals forwards up to the len of lefts. But what if rights is shorter? Well, don't worry about that little Johnny. We'll also be up to the length of the rights. I think that works, right? You're just slicing the list. You're just saying, hey, I want the first length of lefts, the first length of rights or forwards. And then when we go to do lefts, we can just say lefts equals lefts up to the len of forwards. And we can do the exact same thing for the rights. Then what we can do is we can say final data equals forwards plus lefts plus rights. So it just kind of adds the lists up. So it just kind of throws them all together in the same list. You wouldn't want to use append because it would append the actual arrays. That wouldn't be probably be, I don't, well, I don't, I, the pluses will work. Don't fight me on this. Shuffle final data. And then let's just for posterity, let's go ahead and print len final data just so we can see what happened and actually let's also uh, print len train data and then len final data and then finally np.save training data v2 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 there we go time dot not pi numpy and then we're saving final data to that variable Whew. Okay, let's do it. Let's see how we did. Hopefully no errors. Hopefully we don't see no matches either. I don't want none of that. Arr! We typoed four words. So our starting data is about 83.5, so I was correct, about 80,000. You probably wanted more like 100,000, but you'll see what I'm saying here. You should already kind of guess that we're, we're going to have more like about 20,000 data or something. What did I do? Typoed four words. Let's try again. Got pretty far in the script, though. So we ended with about 22,000 training samples. They should be shuffled, but now we should have an even number of forwards, lefts, rights. So when we train our neural network, it's not going to be unbelievably unbalanced. Okay, so actually, I think that's a good stopping point because the next step is to create a neural network, train the neural network, and then test the neural network. So um, in the next tutorial, we are going to be um, training the neural network. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to them below. Oh, one thing. One thing I didn't mention, I should have mentioned probably in the previous one. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to upload this um, training data. It really doesn't take that long to make some training samples for this first example. Um, this is not going to be the final step of this process. Um, eventually, I'm going to probably wind up sitting here and playing GTA 5 for hours for science, and uh, and creating a much larger training set. So. Um, and probably then, I'll probably host that somewhere, just so you guys don't all have to do it. But one thing that I that I kind of want you guys to take home is this could be anything. You don't have to be on a scooter. You don't even have to be on Grand Theft Auto V. You don't have to be doing traffic. You could do a different task of some kind. It just needs to be somewhat basic. Um, so feel free to try something else. But anyway, later on, I'll probably host my training data, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to host this one. So, yeah. You, hopefully you're not too lazy to just create these quick samples, but yeah, later on, I want to build and have like, like right now, this is only like 20,000 samples. So we're probably not going to get the greatest neural network, but eventually you want to have over a hundred thousand after balance samples and probably even more than that. So um, I'll probably host that one just so you guys don't all have to do it. Anyway, um, that's it for now questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we will be uh, building and training this neural network. Till next time.